Welcome back to the Ashby Knuckles podcast. I'm Jay Dubs, and with me today are Mosey P and B Woods. And today we are talking about goats and hype trains derailed. And goats that prevail. Who never fail. Come on, John. You got to continue to rhyme. Come on, man. Come on. I thought you was a rapper. I never claimed that. <laughs> um, i seen you with them burrito rappers, though, so. <laughs> hey, I, they're delicious. All right, lead off, John. Who's, who's, uh, who's one goat that you think? Uh, I, I think. I be on the or, Rushmore, the Mount Rushmore. Who's your who's your number one? Number one, undisputed, and I think I think for everyone with a brain that enjoys MMA, it's John Jones. He is undisputed goat. He beat everyone he's faced. He's never lost. Period. A tough thing to argue against. Hey, 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 the record books say otherwise. Everyone, including Dana White, numerous uh, people on athletic commissions have tried to get that overturned, and I, I bet you they will overturn it when his career is over. They will finally get that removed. What they gonna be? Like? Yeah. Which referee that is no longer working as a referee made that? boneheaded, terrible decision. I don't know, man, but I think it's messed up to just discount the vicious ground and pound that Matt Hamill landed with his face against John John Jones' elbows. Yeah, he's going for the break. Clearly. He was trying to hurt. He was trying to, like, yeah, he's trying to wear him out. Clearly. Yeah, that... Uh, you're right. You're right. I mean, John Jones also... Nearly lost to Chael Sonnen's vicious uh, face pounding that he endured that broke John Jones' toe. Yeah, See? the force, the force of uh, the the impact caused John Jones' toe to split. But All I right. think that 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 is like <laughs> the number one in most people. Like everything outside of the ring or octagon, every that that's all noise, but just purely from a fight perspective. And we're not talking about the the turn of bite or whatever BS because in the words of Nate Diaz, they're all on steroids. This is true. The only thing undefeated is time. The second is the internet. The third is this rhyme. Oh, my God. All right, John Jones, yes. He's probably the greatest of all time just from his resume alone inside the cage because outside the cage, he's definitely caught some L's. But my personal guy that's going to be on that Mount Rushmore is probably going to be this little dude named Mighty Mouse. His body of work is second to none. Well, second to one, if you want to go there. You're talking about that look, that short guy that got beat up by Henry Cejudo? He did not get beat up by Henry Cejudo. In my books, when you finish somebody and they say no mas, and winning by a decision is two different things. Yeah. Winning by a controversial decision as well. Mm. Now, given he did lose to the bigger dude over in uh, 1FC, but I think he got his... Get back and then some. No matter how many fish in the sea, it'll be so empty without me. But I I also want to talk about this one guy that's possibly going to be the greatest of all time in the Bantamweight division. And his name is Aljamain Sterling. Mm. He he's He's processing right now, typing up a resume currently similar to John Jones by defeating all former champions. And I don't know about you guys, but I know John absolutely loves his style of fighting. 
where he puts his hands on the mat with his knees to basically defend anything you try to do unless you try to grapple with him there. And that's like the perfect defense because you can't knee him in the head because you'll get a disqualification. All you can do is try to punch and then from there, he could go for a takedown of his own. Right, John? You're right. Al Jermaine Sterling, I think, is on the route Rushmore already. He is he is going to be undefeated in Bantamweight. He's going to move up to uh, Featherweight, and he's going to beat the crap out of Max Holloway. He's going to beat the crap out of Volkanovski. He's going to beat Yair Rodriguez. And then he's going to go up to 155, and he's going to give Islam his second L. And then he will retire, and he will be above John Jones. He will be undisputed champ, champ, champ. This is going to happen. It's inevitable. Well, what's the word? Style... Satire, right? Satire? Is that a word? Satire, right? Yes, I think Stop it. The, people, the people that are calling him GOAT already, or even like one of the best fandom weights in history... It's absurd. He won off a DQ. And then he got a split decision against the guy he was ostentatiously losing against before he got DQ'd. Then he fought a guy with one arm, and it took him two rounds to be able to finish him. And then he got another controversial split decision. Yeah. <sighs> He, he's he's champ. I'm not disputing that, but it's on paper it looks great. But I don't think I think it's a very is an asterisk next to it. And 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 you also have the number one contender in that division refusing to fight him, but will fight every guy he beats. I make it make O'Malley sense. was the uh, number one in that division. Oh, it's Marab, and they are. Like, I think they should force that fight to happen after the Sean and Alger fight if Sean loses. Hold up, play. Let me check it out. Let me let me get the car facts real quick. And catch my drift. <laughs> this is gonna be easy. Obvious goat, not much more. I'm gonna go with a Canadian guy by the name of George Saint Pierre. Uh, for simple reasons, uh, no emotions involved. I mean, I'm made out of man, so I don't know how to do that. I'm gonna just go with, you know, he came in the game, a uh, heavy striker. Everybody who was anybody uh, got a loss to another Hall of Famer named Matt Hughes. Came back. Beat that same uh, Matt Hughes after he learned how to wrestle, and and got a fluke loss, some would say, to the legendary Matt Sarah by knockout, and came back to came back to beat the absolute fuck out of uh, Matt Sarah on the route to becoming one of the best light lightweight champions of all time. He also moved, I mean, uh, welterweight champions of all time. He also moved up in weight. To face the notorious Michael Bisbing, uh, one of the most decorated middleweight champions of, in history, uh, <laughs> he uh, beat the fuck out of Michael Bisbing as well. So we got a guy who was able to overcome defeat three times. I mean, if you count Father Time, because he beat Father Time to come back and beat uh, Michael Bisbing. So he beat Father Time. Well, no one else has been able to beat George St. Pierre, Mr. Rush, Ross Sahabi, um, pupil, holla at your boy. I'm going with George St. Pierre. You know what I mean? As the great Muhammad Ali once said, you know, he didn't say this, but I'm saying it for him because he's dead. Um, it ain't it ain't about how hard you get hit. It's about how hard you, <laughs> it's about how hard you uh, can get hit and keep going. I think that was Rocky, not Muhammad Ali, but you know what I mean. And what I think is... People like to focus on losses and wins numbers. But I think with GSP, he's even said this, the losses that he took 
made him grow as a fighter. Like he didn't respect Michael Sarah or uh, you know, and he or Matt Sarah, and he got KO'd, and that taught him to never disrespect and never underestimate, and take everyone seriously. And his loss to Matt Hughes was that was his hero, his idol, the goat of welterweight at the time, and he didn't think he deserved to be in that fight. And he didn't believe he could beat him, so he lost to himself. And then he comes back, and then he dominates. Like I think that is true, like a truly inspirational story to take from your losses and learn from them. And that's the toughest battle is you versus you. Always, I think we. I think as, as MMA fans, um, we are a little bit more forgiving of losses than boxing fans are. Like a boxing fan, if you get a loss. Um, if you get an almost loss in boxing, people are um, way more critical of you than if you get a loss like in mixed martial arts. See it all the time. As can guys like Nate Diaz, who have sixty losses, are still stars in the sport. Whereas in boxing, if you get two or three losses, people look at you as an afterthought. So um, I don't think there's as much importance on the loss to me as. To me, it matters, matters more to me. If you do fight the guys who are at the top level, because if you keep competing against the guys at the top, uh, unless your name is uh, John Jones, apparently, you're going to rack up some losses. You keep fighting the best guys in the world. Well, I, I bring that up because there's a lot of newer fans that harp on this one guy. He's, you know, they call him GOAT. But, you know, he retired early, and he had 29 wins and zero losses, and he never got knocked down, never bled. That's that's the thing they like to harp on, you know. Um, name Khabib, and they call him the GOAT, and they put him above John Jones, and it, it's absurd to me. Uh, especially when you have 20-something of those wins outside of the USC and your father's... Uh, promotion fighting against taxi cab drivers with a one in nine record yeah khabib has like 15 wins against goat herders so to me i don't really i think khabib's excellent i think he's an awesome fighter to me like i said before it's the quality over the uh result you can i mean a lot of guys it happens in boxing all the time where you'll see a guy have undefeated kind of inflated record where they fought, you know, guys who basically are farmers or, you know, club level boxers. They call them bums, which stands for big uncoordinated motherfuckers. Um we it happens all the time. You see thirty and O, uh forty and O and then they end up fighting someone who's worth any salt and get bodied. Beeb is a special case because I'm I, I think a lot of the t a lot of fights that could have happened with him didn't. That's why it's tough for me to put him in that goat list, an all time great list. Because, I mean, I would love to have seen him against that prime level Tony Ferguson. That was a very cursed fight. I mean, they tried to do that fight sixteen times. Um, and even he, even there's never someone like. Oh, I'm sorry. Even even though um, Habib competed most of his career at 155 pounds. He was a notorious uh, guy for having a really large weight cut. So it would have been interesting to see him fight at 170 pounds and compete against some of the guys in that um, at time that were uh, great champions or uh, great fighters. That would have been awesome to see. And since we didn't get to see that from him, it's hard for me to put him above a guy like GSP, who we did see do that. We saw GSP move up. We saw GSP come back from adversity, and we saw GSP also achieve great runs and great winning streaks. So if I were to put um, Habib on that Mount Rushmore, he would have to be fourth. Yeah, I, I, I don't even... It, it's hard for me to even consider him up there uh, over someone like Anderson Silva. Bandit. Anderson Silva did have his down, you know, father time to beat Saul, and after that leg break, that freak accident, you know, he just wasn't the same. But still, he, he put on very entertaining fights, but during his reign, like, he was a dominant champ. 
except for that one time against, you know, the undefeated, undisputed Chael Sonnen. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I mean, that is hilarious to see him get his ass beat for 24 minutes and then choke him out. Uh, that is that is an impressive fighter to, to have that adversity and to come back from behind. So, again, I put him in number four. <laughs> no arguments there. What's up, Mo? All right. I, I was going to harp on the whole losing, having losses in the MMA, because if you really look at it, how many? Okay, John Jones. He's got a loss on paper, but we all know the truth. GSP, Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse lost to uh, Dominic Cruz. Who do you think will win if they fought right now? Exactly. Oh, I think, uh, exactly. It, yeah. Exactly. Well, unanimously, we all agree. More than likely, Mighty Mouse is winning that fight. GSP, he got, what, two losses to Matt and Matt? Mm-hmm. Technically, he should have lost to Johnny Hendricks, but that's a different story. There. Then you yeah. got uh, Anderson Silva, like you say, and he came into the UFC with, what, four losses already? Before he went mm-hmm. on that tear. So these losses don't really, it's, it's definitely not like boxing where if you got zero losses, you getting paid, you start getting losses unless you're already a face of boxing somewhat like Canelo who got what, what's he got now, like three losses, two losses, something like that. Something like that. He's still going to get paid because he's a face right now. But these guys that are in MMA, that who has no losses right now that's a champion? Besides John Jones, no one. All the all the champions, all the current champions have losses. Yeah, so those losses don't really mean too much in MMA. I, I have a question for you guys. What about Stipe? Where do you put him? I would I would, I would put Stipe in the same um, category as some of the guys who I have on the outside looking in, as who had great runs. And dominant portions of their career, um, guys like Daniel Cormier, guys like uh, Cain Velasquez, guys um, like who, who else am I think of right now? I, I guess Hennon Burrell had a really good run too, where he went on like he was like undefeated forever. He was um, before he got derailed by TJ. Jose Aldo had an excellent run. That he can uh, you know. He was un- unbeaten for years. Man. He had some impressive runs, but I won't put him in that same um, category as those guys. That that E tier. That all these guys we're listing right now are A tier guys, and I would put him right below that. Well, personally, I would put these guys in the S tier, uh, uh, great above even the the best. You know, because John Jones, GSP. Uh, Silva, DJ, they they are, I think, generational talents. Like you won't see another one of them, you know, uh, until when a, a new crop of kids grow up. They're coming around, though. I think uh, for the next five years or so, it's going to be it's going to be tough. Just like seeing Anderson end up passing the torch down to Izzy, stuff like that. It's going to be tough for us because we're going to see like. A lot of these legends end up going away, kind of like how it did previously. The only one, if you really look at it from the old era, maybe like, just say 10 years ago, is who? John Jones. Am I right? Right. And we got John Jones moving up from 205 to heavyweight um, and becoming a champion again. Becoming a champion in a different weight class. So that puts him in, I think that puts him kind of in a class of his own. Um, yeah, yeah. He, the guy, he really is. Are there any guys that we that we're currently watching have potential to usurp these top four names besides Aljamain Sterling? Uh, I think Izzy has the potential because Izzy has done something very few have have done, and he got finished, came back very quickly, and finished the guy that finished him. That doesn't happen with many champs. We saw with 
Usman. He came saw, back and you also saw it with GSP. And he GSP. Finished, he, he finished Matt Sarah. But so that I think that he has potential if he keeps on going on to be I think to usurp Anderson Silva. Because they did have a face off and you know you have father time on one side, but you the, the, the fight did happen, and it did go Izzy's way. But, yeah. ag- again, if you put them in their prime, who... It's an unfair to say that, but if Izzy keeps on winning and keeps on being a dominant champ, I do think he has the chance to enter that club. We hear that word a lot in fight sports, uh, the word prime. And I think that's why I give so much credit to the guys who have a long title reign. Because you are fighting the best of the best in their prime. And I think the guy that loses doesn't get as much notoriety as a guy that wins for being in their prime. You're fighting the guys who are the number one contenders and the guys who are earning their way to the top, especially in yesteryear's UFC. I mean, that's not so true now. Like, in, in today's age, um, you have to, if you have good mic skills and you have good charisma, you can earn a title shot by just talking a little bit of shit and get, getting well, some buzz. But before, um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you had to earn the right to fight for the title. So being the number, the number one contender or fighting for the title meant you were among the best in the world. Well, that may, that may not be true anymore. I, uh, I also have a, a number five pick. I want to hear your opinion on uh, Fedor. The last czar. Did did you say the czar? Last the last emperor? czar. The last the last emperor. Yeah, I thought he was like the last it. emperor. Why? Well, well, uh, Does that mean the same thing? So yeah, czar yeah. means if you're going like old school, like uh, USSR Russia. <laughs> USSR. <laughs> yeah, this is back when Ukraine was still cool with uh, Russia. So we talking about some time, uh, not now. Now they they don't they are not that not, it's not so cool with each other, and that's a huge understatement. Um, if we if we're gonna go back in history and talk about like guys like that, I think they can go to the pioneer wing, wing because you, then you have to include guys like Hoyce Gracie and guys like. Uh, you know, Vidor Belfort had an insane run in that time where he could be considered one of the GOATs if you're going to go back in yesteryear. But um, I think those guys should, they deserve their own place in history as pioneers. But I will put them on a pioneer wing. That's fair. I do have one guy that could possibly end up surpassing um, GSP as one of the goats to ever do it at 170 pounds and that guy's Whoa. name is Bilal Muhammad oh shut up <laughs> shut the fuck up this guy's on a winning streak what is what, what's the matter I, what's wrong I, with him? when's the last time he lost tell me John tell me John <laughs> I, I've got to have an aneurysm with this. He is. I, I I think that there is just some cosmic force trolling me with Bilal's career. It, every time, like the the Leon eye poke, he was losing that, and he gets saved by the eye poke. And then he, all right, I just found out the true extent. Of um, Burns injuries. Let me uh, let me pull that up real quick. All right, let's see. He had a sprained neck, torn left AC joint, second to third grade, torn left deltoid, and torn left trapezius muscle. He had all that, and he couldn't get finished by Bilal. Are you kidding me? Yo, he, you had to go. <laughs> He went to a decision with a man that was severely injured. And he did all that. I mean, he caused the injury. He damaged that man. If you're going to argue that, 
we got to say that it's really, really tough to finish Gil. Gil went wire to wire, although it was, it was five or three rounds to the five. But he went wire to wire with Hamzat, and Hamzat couldn't put him away either. So it's I don't know if that's a knock on Bilal as much as it's a testament to how tough Gil is. Maybe. But look, I, Gil's I, tough, I, man. Gil's tough. I mean, he did get knocked out by Uzman with a jab. So, I mean, there is that. But um, Uzman, well, we we were talking about Kamaru Uzman as being one of the guys who could usurp GSP as well before um, some dude, some Jamaican British dude, uh, headshot dead, came along and you know tore that book up and closed that chapter. Yeah, it was very unfortunate. Um, I, oh, yeah. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate for Kamaru. Very fortunate for Leon Edwards. But it's unfortunate that Leon has to fight. But, which we were you're talking about earlier, the guys that lose to the champs, the dominant champs, don't get enough credit, but it's changed modern day because Colby gets a lot of credit for the putting on such a display against Usman with such a dominant champ, you know, and him getting that title shot off of Jorge and then the two losses to Usman and people saying that he was, would have been champ if Kamar Usman didn't exist. They say it's that. Very, they say, uh, Kobe fans do say that. And I will say, I will say this, though. Kobe did... Uh, wear a broken jaw better than anybody I've ever seen in my life. Like, he got dismantled in that fifth round versus Kamaru, and he was out of there. That man ran himself to the hospital. So I'll say uh, Kobe does deserve credit for being um, a gamer in a sense that he, in title fights especially, because he's had um, a couple of them now, does show up and he's always he never has trouble with making weight he looked really good against um a guy who he calls a journeyman in jorge masvidal he looked great against a dinosaur tyron woodley a dinosaur rda however Kobe just doesn't have the top ranked wins of the guys who are anyone right now in 170. you look at the current landscape of 170 like the who's who I mean, he slated the fight, Leon Edwards, and that that fight hasn't been announced yet, unless something happened while I wasn't uh, aware. Uh, I, I think he may be able to be um, able to beat. He can. I think he has what it takes to beat Leon until he can prove it um, and get that belt around his waist. To me, he's no different than any other contender. Um. In the welterweight division, I don't see him as being anything special. We talking about finishes and getting getting the job done. This dude can barely finish a bowl of nachos. When was Kobe's last finish? Tyron. I mean, Tyron Woodley's ribs. Uh, the Grandpa Tyron, he beat defeated Grandpa Tyron. Grandpa Tyron got knocked out by a YouTuber. So I mean. I don't, know, I don't know what the. I, I mean, no, no disrespect to Tyron Woodley. He's a, he was a great champion in his day, but we all. I said at the outset, I quoted Nas when I said, um, "The only thing undefeated this time. The second is the internet, and the third is this rhyme. So, our time beats everyone. I, I think that the problem with Walter Lee is that they don't fight each other. They're just been like a stagnation in that division where they're just not fighting each other but it's really only one guy i mean kobe's just not fighting the top guys that's it i mean everyone else is mixing well, it up well Bilal, it like that him jumping on this gilbert burns fight say like that that was unusual if you know he was trying to ignore the shop cop fight trying to fight upward and not downward right um, but, but shop cop shop cop's not in the top five um but he did fight um, Brady, Brady was uh, higher, much higher ranked than Shafkat has ever made it to. Okay. And he he finished. He uh, Bilal finished Brady. So 
I mean, I know you're not a big fan of Bilal. Me, Bilal, and Kobe are the same guy. One's just, um, one's Republican and one's, um, I guess, Bilal's uh, Muslim. I don't know. He does, he celebrates, I mean, he did uh, go through Ramadan, so I would assume he's Muslim. The boy from Chirac. I, to me, yeah, he's from, I know he's, he's American, I know he's from Chicago, but to me, they have a similar, like, win style. Like, they basically are these smothering volume-type strikers, They don't, and they win a lot of unanimous decisions and split decisions. They're not really known for knocking anybody out or getting the finish. It's not their staple. It'd be a pretty interesting fight if they were to actually match up. I'm not sure. I, hopefully, I can stay awake. Um, but but the trash talk would be awesome before the fight. And I mean that could happen, right? Because if Liam Very loses possible. to Colby, we're, and... we're one we're one fight away from that. I mean, if yeah, if, if Colby can pull it off against Leon, then we have it because Bilal I promised a title shot. Unfortunately, so, I would, would love to have seen Gil pull it off, but uh, here we are. I, I think Gil be, will be back. He He's a dog, though, and he is, I think, he deserves more credit than he gets. We talked a lot about the GOATs. Let's, let's talk about some of the guys who are the opposite of that. Let's talk about some of these hype trains. I got derailed. Let me let me go first. I got one. I got one. Please let me go first. Let me go first. Let me go Send first. It. Send it. His name is Walker Johnny or something like that. He had a different Ooh. name before. But Johnny Walker, this man came in to the UFC blazing. I'm talking about that choo-choo. They were throwing all the coals in there. You saw that joke was flying. That, man... We were all talking about, oh, this guy's going to be the guy to beat John Jones, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Then next thing you know, who, who who bopped him? He's not even in the UFC no more. Corey Anderson, right? Oh, no, no, he is in the UFC. He's fighting this weekend, man. No, no, Corey Anderson's no longer in the UFC. Corey Anderson, That's yeah. who Corey, bopped yeah, Corey, him. And Corey got him. He Corey bopped him. That chair. Yeah, he yeah. bopped him. And ever since then, oh, my God. That, that, that dude's a liability on a... Uh, a parlay. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I think Johnny, uh, the Brazilian whiskey bottle, Johnny Hendrix, Johnny, Johnny Walker, that man single-handedly ended my betting career. <laughs> he got me. He, he let me know that uh, sports betting can't be beat. Uh, my, my, my vote for, I have two guys. My vote for, I'm pretty sure no one's going to pick the two guys I'm going to pick. Hype trains. My first vote is uh, Gregor Gillespie. Because he, at one point, Gregor Gillespie was, everybody thought he would be given Habib problems because he had such a great wrestling pedigree, was finishing everybody with, uh, in the first couple rounds. And then he ran into a buzzsaw that is known as Kevin Lee. A enigma, I should say, Kevin Lee. And so Kevin put the shin to the chin. We haven't even heard much from Gregor at all since then. Um, he's still in the UFC, but he just hasn't been around at all. And Gregor had a lot of hype. He was undefeated. He had impressive wins. He had uh, a great college wrestling career. It's uh, kind of similar to Bo Nickel, where he was just uh, expected to be this great thing and then never really panned out. One other guy I'm going to say that I'm pretty sure won't get notarized is uh, a guy from Georgia. Not Atlanta, Georgia, but European, Eastern European Georgia. I'm talking about um, uh, Giga Chikadze. And Giga just had like, he had a crazy run. He was just finishing everybody. Uh, he had like three finishes in a row, like I think in the first round. And then one, he just completely dismantled Edson Barbosa and sent him packing down to 145 pounds, 135 pounds. One of, one of the uh, smaller divisions, can't remember which one, but uh, beat the living 
shit out of uh, Edson Barbosa and was calling out names like uh, Max Holloway and names like uh, Alexander Volkanovsky and I, mean, I to me I thought like yeah this guy has every, has all the makings of a champion and then he got matched up versus Alvin Cater and Calvin put on an elbow clinic and completely derailed that hype train. I mean, Giga is a prelim guy now. I haven't heard much from Giga at all since um, fighting Calvin Cater. And then, you know, this guy was, if you would have asked me before the Cater fight, I would have been confident saying that this guy would be fighting for championships in the near future. And he went from being the steaming, smoking hype train to derailed and completely out of the uh, title landscape entirely. So if all the guys that we give so much credit to, all these hype trains, all these guys who have these un- impeccable records, who look impressive, I would say just blow your oatmeal, calm down, and let time play it out. Because I know Shafkat is impressive. I know Hamza is impressive. I know Umar is impressive. But until they make it past that threshold, to me, they're just a prospect. What about um, how oh, I'm blanking on his name right now? Ah, oh, Penn State boy, Bo Nickel. To be determined. Well, he hasn't been he hasn't been derailed, so he's still his hype train is still smoking. Because I mean, you, you talked about the three like big hype trains that possibly could be derailed. There's plenty more. Plenty more. So I think I, I'll have I, a couple. Um, Bryce Mitchell was pretty pretty steaming hot, and then he like you know he did that twister, very very hyped, and boom, Ilya Torpia ended it. Yeah, he's fighting here in Jacksonville uh, next month. That's true. Another one that was Another super one. hyped. Super, you know, Dana White was, you know, piping him up and everything. Uh, Darren Till. Woo-wee! That's a good one. Um, and I got, I have another one as well. Uh, Sean Brady was a, a super hyped up, and then he got derailed by Allah Muhammad. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely a big one. Uh, here's another one that um, probably won't go mention because they don't compete in the men's division. But uh, Miss Paige Van Zandt. She was um, she was kind of tearing through the women's division for a while. And um, then she got an OnlyFans. She got some breast implants. And um, she ran into Rose Naman Yunus. And Rose... Um, that fire out pretty quickly. Tony Michelle Watterson and a host of others before she went to uh, bare knuckle boxing. Um, how about a, a guy named Peter Yan? His hype train has been derailed by the ghost. In the Do you really Algeo. feel that way? Do you really feel that way, though? Like I mean, let's let's look at it. He's lost to Aljo. He lost to Sugar Sean. He's lost to Marab. There's an asterisk. What you like to say with the uh, Sugar Sean decision? Ah, uh, no. In my opinion, you think he won that fight? We watched it together, and you're right. You're right, and, and we. I thought Peter Young won. It, it, I, I had an initial thought, but then I went back and watched it a few times now, and I think Sean did enough. I think Jan does not. If if Jan was the incumbent champ, I think he would like. If he fought all those fights, I think he would still remain champ. Like if he was actually I, a champion instead of uh, right getting DQ'd and losing the title, right? Right. If, if he had fought uh, hypothetically, he beat Aljo that first time. He fought Aljo again. He would have won that decision. If you fought. Sean, he would have won that decision. If he fought Marab, he would have won that decision. 
by having like his style lends itself to being the incumbent champ. Now, now I don't know yeah, I if you would have beat Marab though. I don't know about that one. I guess, I guess, I guess what John's saying is the champ does get the edge in splits, and if he would have had had he been champion, it'd have been a little bit easier to see him get the nod in a decision versus Marab as opposed to being a contender. Just regular fight. Yeah. That makes sense, but I don't know if Yan could count as a hype train because he was the champion. Yeah. He made it he to made the it top, to so I don't think he can. I don't think he, he counts. I got uh, here's a guy that does count. I got one. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's see if you can get the same guy. Serial gun. Ooh. We hyped him That's up tough. tremendously. That's tough. I don't, he was an interim champ, though. I, must say, I don't know if he counts, Mo, because he, no. I mean, he. He was he wasn't just hype. Like there's the, no the reason were, for that interim belt to begin with though. Other than the fact that he demolished everybody in his wake. I mean he did beat the shit out of Tai to Ibasa. And he did beat Derek Lewis convincingly. I mean he didn't he earned it. And he got to the top. He just got smoked by twice. John Jones. Both those guys. Yeah. And and I, Francis, I, you know, so I would, uh, I would, uh, I would argue with Ryan prior to the John Jones, but uh, that 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 is granted. We we all know how good John Jones, but to be defeated that quickly and easily, and not to have he's an incomplete fighter, and I think that John was the guy to expose that. And no, no, it was Francis. Francis, Francis exposed it. Francis took him down seven hundred times. With one leg, no sure. legs. With, with two, with two bum knees. With no legs, exactly. And that's that's another thing. That's why I don't give any any credit to people who go, "Oh, you're injured in this buddy." There's no one healthy in a fight. If you you if you make it past training camp, most likely you have some kind of injury. It might be undisclosed, but there's no way you're in, entering any fight hundred percent. Here's another hype job that I don't think we, we kind of forgot about. Pretty boy Sage Northcutt. Hey, he got a heel hook very quickly. He's had a good weekend. career in that one. Sage was like, he looked the part too. Like, Sage looked like a world beater. He got pushed too quick, too fast. Here's what they. I think they learned from him in handling guys like uh, Patty and not Patty. giving them pimblet. Uh, you know, not throwing these pro- like hot prospects to the wolves right away. They kind uh, of push them. You can say the same for Sean O'Malley, but I think it's it's it, it it's part of the business though. Like if you're gonna have a guy that you gotta get behind with your PR machine, at some point, famous rubber has to hit famous road. You can't just be, uh, what do they call it? What, what do they call the cars? What they, they never race them, but they're uh, show cars. Uh, it's it's, right. no, it's not a, a, like a garage queen. Like it's like a, it looks like a it looks like a beast, but it never hits the track. So, I think that there is a middle ground here, right? So you want your guys to get time and experience beating. Not the the elite of the division. You want to get them comfortable, like Bo Nickel. You you don't want to throw him into a you know comes up fight or a fight with Izzy right away because he's had what two three fights in in the main. You want to get him a little more comfortable in that, right? You don't want to just throw him immediately at the wolves and have him get lost, like lose, and then end that train completely. From a, but business also, stand, from a business standpoint, absolutely not. I mean, you don't want to throw them directly against champions. They should be battle-tested. Like, and if you want to get them battle-tested, the only way is to go through the gauntlet of the guys who are in the top 10. I don't think there's a way to go around that. Well, you get them, you have them fight the, you know, lower echelon, you build them up, and then get them going into the, you know, have a few fights and then get them into the bigger... Uh, into the you know wading into the waters, the deeper waters. Because yeah, you have a guy, no problem with that at all. Like Duplisi, he he was fighting lower tier guys, and then he started fighting 
top 15, top 10, and now he's fighting for a uh, title eliminator. He's knocking on a gate, um, and he's fighting. <laughs> he's fighting a guy who is uncrowned king of middleweight. I mean, to me, uh, Robert Whitaker is one B eight one B in that division. But to me, that division has two champions. Um, here's another guy that I would say that probably will get overlooked. At one time, he was uh, threatening Israel Adesanya, talking a little bit of shit about being the middleweight champion, and everyone thought that he might be uh, the boogeyman. And that's uh, Edwin, Edwin Shabazian. No one remembers that name exactly. Uh, he was um, on the fast track to being champion until he got derailed. He's not even ranked no more. He's not even ranked. Think about it. Like that guy was blazing through the middleweight division, and everyone thought that he would be the guy to test Izzy, and he didn't even sniff the top five. You can't even blame his coach, man. Hey, man. His coach trained champions. Winners make a way, losers make excuses. Let's see who else. What do y'all think uh, Paulo Casa could have been a hype train? Hard to say that because he did compete for the championship. So I don't know if he was a hype train. Is he? I mean, he made it there. And I guess the same argument could be made for Darren Till, even though he, he fought for the welterweight title and not the middleweight title. I, um, but I, 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 can see the, I can see the argument because he was just as – unbeatable force for a while everyone thought that not only would he be able to beat Izzy but he would make quick work of him he was just smoking everybody he even I mean I guess technically speaking we can say the same thing about Yoel Romero and what could have been I don't I don't think Paulo is a high train though I think he is a legitimate contender and I think he is the hardest fight at middleweight for Hamzat. Really? You think he's the hardest fight for Hamzat? I, th- I think he's one of the hardest fights, I should say. I think it's a very I mean, competitive I mean, fight. Okay, because we haven't even seen Hamzat fight anybody relevant in middleweight. The only guy he fought at middleweight so far was Mirshart. Mirshart? Mirshart? Yeah. yeah, that's the only guy. Um, I think he would struggle against Vittori. I think he would struggle against Whitaker. I, I, I got Whitaker to win that fight. I think he'd struggle against Brunson. He would probably struggle or get bodied by Pereira if he can ever make 185 pounds again. I think he would have a tough time against... Um, Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought, but the guy, uh, damn it. What's the guy's name that dropped from heavyweight to light heavyweight to Cannoneer. middleweight? Jared Cannoneer. I think he struggled against all those guys. Um, he's shown some, I mean, all he's shown dominant wrestling prowess. He did have that one punch knockout against Mirshard, but other than that, man, we had, we seen him test battle tested against a uh, former 155er and Gilbert Melinda, Gilbert Melendez. Gilbert Burns, so I, I'm not sure I can crown him as being this like boogeyman in middleweight. Well, not besides yet. that, uh, who's the current hype trains you guys uh feeling? I got one, and he's already been kind of derailed, but I think he'll be back on track. It's uh Adrian Yanez. That was a uh, that was my personal pick to be the next star of uh, bantamweight, but I think he got pushed up too far. I think he should have fought somebody like maybe a, a Ricky Simone or Pedro Wait, Munoz. You, hold on. No, I'm confused. Are you saying hype trains that have real potential or just hype trains that you think will he, be derailed? He, he was a hype train, but that okay. was my pick. I still think he has it, but yeah, let me take that question all back. Who's okay. your current uh, hype trains? That was mine, but he has been derailed already. Okay, because I had an answer for that. The answer I would say is Terrence McKinney. Um, he didn't get the push at um, 
Eddie Pimblett or even the guys we already mentioned. Like I mean, you just mentioned he didn't get that kind of push, but he had that kind of buzz around him of being this like title contender. But um, my current one, hmm, current guy that's a, a current hype train. That's that may be derailed or may actually make it. Just in general, who's the hype trains right now? Oh, uh, for sure, right now we have to go with I'll say Patty for sure. It was uh, Umar under Magomedov. Um, Are these hype trains you think will be derailed or hype trains that will make it? This, this is already hype trains now, currently. Current hype trains. Current hype trains, not not uh, predicting the future or anything. Uh, let's see. I mean, technically speaking, I still, um, although I'm starting to believe a little bit more, uh, I would say that John O'Malley counts in that too. But he's, you know, he, he, he was very impressive against Peter Jan, so I can't really, can't really say he's all hype. I think he has a very favorable matchup against Aljo. I think his height and striking. Yeah, if, if, if he can keep him at bay with those, I think he That's, has a chance. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, I'll, you think he's going to open as a favorite? You say he has a uh, he's an, he's an edge. He has an edge. Um, I don't know. I, I I can see the line moving in his favor because Aljo is a disrespected champion. Absolutely. And I, That's I, true. I, I, I disrespect him as well, but he <laughs> is fair. still champion. He is still champion. You got to give him the nod, even though there's asterisks next to some of his wins. But he, he yes. like as as a competitor, like when he was like fighting to be get the champion shot, like it was legit. It's yeah. just his reign as champion has a. It is very unfortunate that he got that DQ win. And I, I think if that didn't happen, his reign, even though they were split decisions, would be looked more favorably. Maybe. Might be true. Oh, no. I, I did see Aljo dominate a taller fighter in Corey Sanhagen. So I don't think that there's going to be, an, that the height's going to be an issue. Aljo's very long for, a, for that weight class. I mean, he's, he's not very tall, um, but he's a bigger version. Um, of the 135ers, like he's not, he's bigger than most of the guys there, except for Sam Higgin and um, obviously Sean O'Malley, who's uh, who are the taller guys in that division. But Sean has a huge question mark when it comes to grappling. So it, that's that, that alone is enough to give to me to give all Joe the edge in that fight. I mean, if it does become a stand up fight only, yeah, I would lean more towards Sean O'Malley. But I don't see that as being the case. It's going to be a five-round title fight, so the chance of there being no grappling in that fight is very, very low in my mind. Hey, you know they uh, placed Henry Cejudo in the, the rankings for Bantamweight just recently? He's uh, number three. Wow. Yeah, he's number three. So we could possibly get uh, Cheeto fight against Cejudo. We could get a uh, Peter Yan fight against Cejudo. We could get a Sanhagen fight against Cejudo. Or you, you know, you know what, Rob? That's what I, I would. I would love to see Cejudo Mirab. That's that would be good. interesting. That would be very, very interesting. I would love to see Mirab like displaced because his refusal to fight Aldo is just annoying. Like I, I don't like that. Yeah, I mean that that happens a ton in MMA though. You got you got we had that um constantly. We had um at heavyweight we had DC and Kane were buddies and they never fought. And then we had Anderson Silva and um Leota Machida who were buddies and they never fought. We had um GSP and uh who was his stablemate? Roy. Guy who had the Roy McDonald, they never fought. So it's not like an uncommon thing. It, it happens quite often in mixed martial arts where you have guys who are in the same stable, were also friends, and they refuse to fight each other. 
But but, a, but according to but according to Aldo, all, all, well, these guys were also title contenders. This what it wasn't a matter of like one guy's a scrub and the other guy is a champion because both um, Rory and GSP were top contenders at 170 pounds. And the same is true with all the other guys I mentioned. Lyoto became champion at 205. Um, Kane Velasquez was the heavyweight champion. And EC became the champion at 205 pounds and a champion at um, heavyweight. However, um, Aljo mentioned that after fighting Sean O'Malley, he plans to vacate and move up. So we'll get the chance to see... Rob fight for titles if um, all Joe's successful. I, I could only really think of two hype trains currently, but I don't really want to call them hype trains. And it's uh, DDP and okay. Shavkat. Those two, I feel they might be hype trains. But they actually got some skills, so I wouldn't really call them hype trains because they have been tested and proven so far. Because they have beaten people within the top six rankings, give or take. Shavkat especially, because he, he, he recently just beat Jeff Neal, and that was a really big test. Whereas um, I'm not sure if Derek Brunson at this point in his career will be considered a real test. He had blonde hair? Nope. <gasps> Well, dang. That yeah, kinda, wouldn't it wouldn't. Uh, takes away from the win, don't it? Yeah, not, not non blonde Brunson. Uh, I don't know. So, I, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think DDP does have a chance to, uh, to make some noise, but to me, he's in the same. He's the same to me as uh, Hamza. Oh, I don't. I think they're. I think they're both uh, hype trains. Sell me on this fight, John. How does DDP beat Robert Whitaker? Duplessis for people who do not know who DDP is. Oh, What's his name? Uh, Derek Driscus. Driscus. Not Derek. Driscus Duplessis. How does he beat Bobby Knuckles, a.k.a. Robert Whitaker? By by hook or by crook. He, it's going to be a shit show. Every fight he has is just an insane... He's going to lose. He's going to lose. And he pulls shit out of the hat. I... I... So he he has had trouble breathing, and that you know he said this before. We see it where he breathes in his mouth. He had that surgery, so he has better breathing. Will that factor in? Possibly. I think it'll be a very interesting fight. It'll be very. It's hard because Bobby Knuckles is the man. If you beat him, you beat a a world champion. Like it, it is a, a big deal. As as Brian said, you know he's the uncrowned king. It's a very similar <sighs> situation with uh, Max Holloway at featherweight. Yeah, it, it's it's super. I, I don't know. I don't. I like D, DDP. I uh, I think he has a chance. Not a great one, because I mean. Because he doesn't have the grappling versus um, Bobby Knuckles. What do you, he, I don't know. He. Mm. We'll have to wait and see. We've seen stranger, more crazier things. Absolutely. We have seen some. Some strange things happen, and we've seen some guys uh, pull off wins where we didn't expect them. Um, I didn't. I never thought I'd. I, after watching the first fight with Peter Jan and Aljamain Sterling, I did not think Aljamain would still be holding the belt at this point. But here we are. Um, um, there's one hype train we forgot to mention. Who's that? Vicente Luque. Ooh. Oh, he got derailed heavy. There's one that we forgot to mention because this boy was on a, a tear. Mm-hmm. He was on a tear. 
That is one we definitely forgot to mention. Hey, did he beat he beat Wonder Boy, right? Or did he lose the Wonder Boy? He, no, he beat one. I think he did beat Wonder Boy. He beat Wonder Boy. He beat. Did he beat Wonder Boy? Wait, does Wonder Boy count in that too? No, nah, we already know where Wonder Boy is. Uh, what he's doing. Okay. Well, but, Vicente. It's interesting you mentioned Vicente because he's also one of those guys who has a training partner that he refuses to fight in uh, Gilbert Burns. Yep. So. We have examples of that in modern in modern MMA as well. It just doesn't happen, man. Sometimes you you form a bond with the guys in your camp, and uh, whatever reason, I know fans want to see those fights, but um, these are people, so you like that. Nah, he he lost to uh, Wonder Boy, but he went on a tear before Wonder Boy. Then he went on a tear right after that. Then he he's on back to back losses to a guy he beat previously. And I think that is uh, Bilal's last loss, too, was uh, against Luke. Jeff Neal, you mean? Didn't Jeff Neal beat Luke? Yeah, he lost to Bilal, then he got slept by uh, Luke. Mm. I mean, hold on. Let me, let me, by Jeff Neal. Yeah, he got slept by Jeff Neal. Right. I don't um, know who you meant. Lost decision to Bilal, then got slept by Jeff Neal. Hands of Steel? Jeff Neal. Hands of Steel. And he got a beautiful real naked joke by Shafkar. That was a really that good, was a good that fight. Was a good fight. That was a good fight. Really good fight yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That was, um, that was worth the worth the ticket. It was a, a banger. Barn burner, mm-hmm. slobber knocker, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I mean, uh, whether you're a legend or uh, and you can even reach that Mount Rushmore or you're a hype train, we are all fans of mixed martial arts. Uh, if you like this content, definitely hit it, leave us a like and subscribe. Good boy, up. We're trying to grow this thing up. So, and give us any comments. Uh, if you if you see uh, anything we missed, or you have any uh, commentary, hit us up. Don't be afraid. We talk. We'll talk shit back to you in the comments. I'll let you boy. Well, that's that for. Me, Mosey P, B Woods, and Mr. J Dubs. We're gonna zip it up. Zip it out, baby. Zippity doo da. Bye bye.